But here we are, brethren, only two weeks from returning from the Feast of Tabernacles, and as we look down the road, let's face it, the next feast is a long way away. Six, half, six and a half months away before our next spring feast. Now, some of us, it's going to feel like an eternity, while others, it'll feel like it's just around the corner. But why is that? Why do, that, why do we feel that way? To some, the road ahead will be just a long way off. To others, just a hop, skip, and a jump. And all of a sudden, there's the feast day. I guess what we can say here now, the reason for it is how well did we fill our spiritual tanks at this year's Feast of Tabernacles? Or what I'll call at God's refueling stations along the way. Now, some, for some of us today, just a short distance from the Feast of Tabernacles, and some may already be registering at maybe a quarter tank less. While some of us, the tank is not, the, the gauge has not even moved. So you're running at a full tank, no matter what. And why would that be that way? Did we take full advantage of filling our tanks of the blessings that God provided for us at this year's Feast of Tabernacles? We needed to maximize the effectiveness of our spiritual benefits from the messages that we all received at this year's feast. This would ensure us, brethren, that our spiritual tanks were being topped off so as to carry us down that road, that long road, to the spring festivals. Now, at this particular major festival, or, or I should say refueling station, which is the Feast of Tabernacles, we should have refilled our tanks with both the spiritual and the physical fuel, fuel provided. We should always be drawing closer to God and have a better understanding of his plan, his laws, through the messages that we were taking in, while, of course, drawing closer to each other through our own fellowship. Now, we can thank God, brethren, that he knew that his salvation, his plan for salvation, which incorporates all seven of his holy days, that he knew there would be a long duration between the fall and, of course, the spring feast days. But God expected us to take full advantage of these fall holy days to ensure that we would have the spiritual fuel to take us through to the next spring festivals. So the question is simple. Did we take full advantage of refueling our spiritual tanks completely of all the blessings of, that God had to offer us? Or did we maybe neglect to fill ourselves with some of the messages that we have heard? Or maybe even to joyfully fellowship with the brethren of like kind, like mind, I should say, those locally in the area that we were at, maybe from those across the country. And I heard at some feast sites, there were many who came even from around the world. If not, we could have shortchanged ourselves and left that pump without topping ourselves off with God's blessings. I was recently reading a report from a minister who was counseling a member in their congregation. By the way, let me make it clear, it was not UCG, was not a member of UCG or a minister from UCG. But they were going through some very difficult spiritual times in their life. Now, the, first, the minister, first, his first question was, are you keeping your spiritual tank full? Hence, brethren, the title of my sermonette today, keeping a full spiritual tank. Keeping a full spiritual tank. Now, the person that they asked, the minister asked, had kind of a blank look on their face. Wasn't sure what he was even talking about. The minister then pulled out a piece of paper and a pen, and he sketched a rudimentary fuel tank. Then he started talking about how each one of us has a spiritual tank, and that that tank, brethren, is full of God's blessings, of good experiences, memories, times that we laugh, moments that we enjoy. And when that tank is full, let's face it, brethren, we find it so much easier to have joy in our lives. 
We laugh at, at things uh, days ahead. We cope with life's trials so much easier. But when that tank is being depleted, we find it difficult to cope, don't we? Even with the little things in life, and even at times, we can't even put a smile on our face. We see that sometimes as we come to church and we see some brethren that we know need some help because they had a rough week. He then began to draw, the minister then began to draw some arrows. And he asked that you imagine that these arrows were being shot at your fuel tank. Now these arrows represented some of the trials, of course, that we face in our lives. For example, overhearing somebody say something mean or untrue about you. Now usually these arrows in most cases just kind of bounce off. You know, they may leave a few dents and dings in the tank, but they really don't cause much damage. Other arrows, though, being flung with maybe a little more force by underlying problems that you may be experiencing at home or at work. Now these arrows, let's face it, they can pierce our tank and may start to allow some of our spiritual fuel to trickle out. Then there are those arrows that can tear right into our tank and cause some very serious problems in our life. Now these arrows, of course, are usually caused by health issues, job losses, marital problems. Now when these arrows hit, our fuel begins to gush out, doesn't it? And it can be hard to stop that flow. If this begins to happen, brethren, we need to have, we need to concentrate on the problem at hand. We now have to, we now have to be able to not only confront the problem, but patch the holes and make sure that we're starting to refill our tank once those holes are patched. This, of course, is where the Sabbath day, the feast days, they play an important role, brethren, along with your personal Bible studies, your personal prayer, to truly know that you're not alone and that help is only an outreached hand away. By who? By a God who truly loves you unconditionally. And he has given us that amazing picture, hasn't he? Of what he has in store for us. Isn't that what the feast was all about this year? And every year that you've been there? To show God's love for us and what he has planned for us? Now once we grasp and believe what God has promised us, the patching problem, it becomes assured. The process becomes assured. Now please, don't misunderstand me. I don't want to give you a false reality. This patching process is not simplistic, and I think we can all claim that it's not for the faint of heart. The most important thing you need to know, though, is even though you're not alone in this process, you need to understand that keeping your spiritual fuel tank is your responsibility. You can't rely on your friends, your spouse, other church members. Now, they can be there to help, but it still becomes your personal responsibility to refuel that tank. Now, for references only, you can jot this down and look at it later. Luke 10, 38 through 42. Again, for references only. Let me paraphrase what Christ told Martha, I think we know the story, when her tank was being punctured, brethren, from life's problems and too much self-inflicted work. What did he do? He gave her, brethren, as he gives all of us, the true repair kit. He tells us our only hope is to pull up a chair, you know, unplug from all that busyness and begin a conversation with the only one who can restore our frantic heart, settle our spirits, and of course, get us headed back to true north. Simplistic, yet very complicated, isn't it? But would an honest conversation with God the Father and an unrushed settling help you today? I have to admit, it's helped me many times. So what sort of things, if you think about it, restores your fuel levels? What do you read? What do you watch? 
that elevates your perspective to a godly plane. Well, let me tell you about a survey that was taken and the people were asked and answered this question. At what level do they find God's spiritual plane? The answer, they had no idea. Didn't know what they were even talking about. Okay, they had no idea what elevated them to God's plane. I don't think there's anybody here who hasn't answered that question for themselves at one time or another in their own personal lives. What elevates you? Now, there are many ways of keeping your spiritual tank full, but I'm only going to direct you to just one of those areas today. And guess what? I don't think any of this is going to be a secret to you. This one poor point is not going to be any secret. That refueling avenue is simply connecting or plugging in with God of all the ways that they're in that book right in front of you. Now, no doubt, most of us has either seen or some of us even in person, the picture of Michelangelo's famous uh, painting of the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. It's called, the, excuse me, the creation of Adam. And what it does is it portray, portrays God and Adam with their hands outstretched toward one another. But as you look closer, you see that God is leaning and stretching toward Adam with her fingertips almost touching Adam's fingertips. And yet, if you noticed Adam, it just doesn't seem like he's reaching quite the extent that he should be reaching. Imagine, though, brethren, imagine that. The very hand of God reaching for the hand of man. Your hand. Can you imagine that? Now, just imagine if Adam or you during those troubled times would have stretched just that extra inch, just that little extra inch, grabbing firmly God's hand and hanging on tightly. That, brethren, captures the biggest fuel tank filler that you'll ever experience. Holding firmly hand in hand with God. And when we have that kind of connection with God, let's face it, we've experienced it. We feel his love. You feel the Holy Spirit stirring up within you. Our conversations, they become more personal. And our hearing is more attuned to his presence in our very lives. At that point, brethren, there is no better fuel tank filler. When we are really connected with God, we are far less affected by any arrows that are being flung our way. And that they try to puncture our, our spiritual tanks in any manner, shape, or form. When we're living hand to hand on God's agenda, not only are we being spiritually filled, but our fuel is being filtered and the impurities and the ways of this world are being discarded. Our time is now. We've heard this at how many feasts? That this year especially, I heard it over and over again. Our time is now, brethren. Now, while our spiritual fuel tanks are at their fullest, we need to extend our hand, grab hold of that only hope that we and this world have. Through the agenda, and the plan God has blessed us to understand through his feast days for the salvation of this entire world. Now, there are many other avenues that you can take to fill your spiritual tanks and to connect to God. I recently just had the opportunity just, just to review. I didn't read the whole thing, but it was kind of interesting to review a book entitled Sacred Pathways. It was by a man named Gary Thomas. And what it did is it described 10 spiritual pathways to connecting with God. It connects those who are truly reaching out for God's hand to connect in different ways, like nature, music, giving, service, loving one to another. If you're not living with a full spiritual tank, brethren, you're not living the way God designed us to live. He designed us to have a better life for all of us now. 
and of course we know in the future. So let's remember that when you live with your spiritual tank on full, you'll do God's work, his bidding, more eagerly. You'll love more effectively. You'll give more generously. You'll serve more willingly. And you will leave a legacy of the Father, Brother, and Savior that you now represent. So, brethren, while you're here, <laughs> make sure you're topping off your spiritual fuel tank. It will make the journey ahead a lot easier to cope with. Let me close by simply saying this. I'll see you at the next refueling station. God bless you.